In this video, I'll show you everything you need to know about using Notion webhooks to automate your agency. So before we do that, let's explain what exactly are webhooks. Well, before Notion released its webhooks, here's how we were able to automate information that came from Notion using third-party tools like Make or Zapier. So the first thing we had was a change in Notion. This could be a status being updated, a date being entered, a box being checked. But whatever it was, there was some kind of change in Notion that acted as our trigger. Then there would be some sort of time interval. And this would basically be what we had entered in our automation tool. So for example, if it was Make, we might ask Make to check inside of our Notion database, let's say every hour or every two hours to see if this change had happened. If there was a change, then that would trigger the automation and we would automate. And if there was no change, then the automation would not go ahead. So essentially the trigger from Notion was an instant. Essentially we were having to get the automation tool to check with Notion if there had been a change and then the automation would trigger. So it was only depend on how frequently that automation tool was checking with Notion. Comparatively now using Notion webhooks, we have a much simpler process. There is the change in Notion and then that triggers the webhook and the webhook is then sent to our automation tool like Make and it triggers that automation instantaneously. So instead of having to get the automation tool to check with Notion if there's been a change every hour or two hours, as soon as that change takes place, so as soon as that status is changed, as soon as that checks box is entered, it will then send a webhook to Make and then that webhook is able to collect the information from Notion and then trigger the automation. So that's what webhooks are doing. Now let's see how we can actually create one inside of Notion. So as you can see here in this webhook page, I have this example database and it just has some properties. We've got a number property, a text property, a checkbox, an example entry. Now to create a webhook, we can use Notion's database automations. So I'm gonna to come to the Thunderbolt uh, icon here. That's gonna open up the automation builder. And I'm just gonna call this an example automation. Now, first of all, we need some sort of trigger. So we need that change in Notion to happen. So let's say it was in fact a checkbox and it was the fact that the checkbox was being checked. So anytime the checkbox is being checked, that is going to be the trigger for this particular automation. And then what it's gonna do, and from our action items here, you can see you have all these different action items, but one of them we have is send webhook. So if we choose send webhook, now we have the option to basically add the URL from the webhook that we would need to grab from make. And then also we have the option to bring it in or bring across um, any of the content from this database. So either the checkbox, the number, the text, or we can select all of the properties. So over on make to find that URL for the webhook, I'm gonna create a new automation and or a new scenario. And then I'm just gonna add a trigger and the trigger here is going to be webhooks. I'm gonna find the custom webhook, which is instant. And then I would could either choose from a webhook if I've already got one existing, but I'm gonna create a new one. And I'm just gonna call this example automation. I'm gonna hit save. And so now Make is waiting to find that trigger. Uh, and so what we need to do is first of all, copy the address. So copy that URL. Over on Notion, we're then going to paste the URL of that webhook and we're going to enable the automation. And then to trigger the automation, we need to trigger our Notion database automation, which happens if you remember when we check the checkbox. So if I check this checkbox, that's gonna trigger the automation. It's gonna send a webhook to make. And now you can see over on make, it's showing that the webhook has been successfully determined and we can hit save. So now we have set up this connection between Notion and Make and the webhook is successfully firing. We can basically add as many modules as we like and use the information from the database. So for example, I could send this information into a Google Sheet and it could pull in that number property, that text property, um, and basically categorize the information in any way I like. So that's what a webhook is and how to create one, but why would we ever use one in the first place? Well, I've found there's broadly two reasons why you might want to use a webhook. The first reason is to create real-time notifications or updates. So here's an example of where that's useful. Inside of Notion, I have my content page, and this is where I manage all of my YouTube videos, my newsletters. And for my YouTube videos, I actually have a thumbnail designer that helps me create my thumbnails. Now, the problem I've been having is that this thumbnail designer doesn't use Notion that often. And so, for example, when I move this 
video from to outline to thumbnail and I want him to start working on the thumbnail, he would either have to come into Notion to check that and see that, or I would have to manually send him a message. Now my thumbnail designer does have Slack and uses it often, and Notion does have a way of sending things to Slack. If I come over to the content database and choose from the options, I can create a new automation. I could set the trigger to the status going from to thumbnail. And then also if I come to these actions, I can see I have the option to send Slack notification to. But the problem is I can only send it to a Slack channel. I can't send it to an individual person. And there's no way of me sort of customizing the information in this message. So this was the solution I was using for a long time, but as you can see, it's pretty imperfect. Well, what I can now do with webhooks is send a webhook to make where I am able to send messages directly to people and customize the messages. So the way that I've set this up is in the database automation in my content database, I have this automation that's called to thumbnail and it's saying when the status is set to thumbnail, we're going to send a webhook to this webhook. And then inside of make in this to thumbnail automation, I've got the webhook. And then inside of make, I have this scenario and it's saying when the webhook happens, the module is to create a Slack message or send a Slack message. And so I'm able to direct a message or send a direct message to this thumbnail designer. And in the text, I'm able to say, hey, thumbnail designer, um, here is the piece of content with a link to the URL of the Notion page. Um, and we're now ready for you to create a thumbnail for it and I can save that. So now when I move this particular YouTube video from outline to thumbnail, that will trigger the automation. And we can now see in my thumbnail designer's direct messages, he's received the message with a link to the actual Notion page to begin work. Other examples of when you might like to use these real-time updates or notifications is if you have a wins channel in Slack or a channel basically where you send whenever you close a deal to the rest of the team, then you could have an automation that when you move a deal from a uh, in progress to one, then that would send a Slack notification to your Slack team saying the deal has been won with the amount, the services and the sales rep. Or you might like to create an automation to automatically send emails to your clients with client reports. That's pulling information again from your Notion databases. For example, if a status is changed, um, and then they can get an update automatically via that as well. Now, the second reason to use webhooks is it allows you to combine automations between Notion and Make or Zapier. And this can be particularly useful for instances where there are automations that are handled better by Notion and where there are automations handled better by Make, but you still want to create it all within one automation. So inside of Agency HQ, we have our deals page and one of the items we have here is this one deal form that essentially whenever a sales rep closes a deal, they fill out this form. And then based on that, it then triggers an automation that actually lives within our sales doc database. So this one deal form automation does a bunch of things, but some of the things it does is it finds the actual deal itself and changes it to one. It also is able to create a client project uh, with the client project template applied, um, as well as a few other things. Now at the end of this automation, we then have this send webhook option. And then over on make, we have part two of this automation that handles any automations that Notion isn't currently able to do. So you can see we create a Google folder, we do some things inside of Slack, we send an additional email, but essentially it's covering things we're not able to do with Notion. So to summarize inside of Notion, we have the fact that we're able to create a database that applies the database template that we're not able to do with Make. And then inside of Make, we're able to do things with Google Folder and Slack that we're not allowed to do inside of Notion. But ultimately that sales form that we complete is where all the information is held. And so we wanna use a webhook to tie these two automations together. So knowing how to use webhooks is one thing, but knowing when and when not to implement an automation is another. For that, you'll need to have an understanding how all processes fit together in an overall system, which is something I talk about in this video here or here. And leave a comment down below of how you might start using Notion webhooks in your agency. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye-bye.